Hello everyone and welcome to Moonlight Jewel. My name is Elisa and in today's video we're going to make Kanakamui from Kobayashi-san Chino Maid Dragon. I've recently watched the show and I just loved it so much and Kana is probably my favorite character, so I really wanted to make her as a doll. But first of all, I wanted to point out that my Usagi Easter doll is up for sale on my Etsy store. So if you guys are interested in purchasing one of my dolls, now is the chance to do so. You can find the link to my shop in the description box. Alright, let's get started on today's doll. For Kana I'll be using Madeline Hatter as a base doll. I really like the cute round faces of the Ever After High dolls and I just thought it would fit Kana perfectly. As usual, I'm going to remove her factory paint and hair first. Starting to cut apart the whole doll. Since Kana is a tiny lonely character, I really wanted to make her extra small. Madeline Hatter is already small, but not small enough. So I'm cutting her body apart, remove bits of her body and also remove the high heel feet completely. looks so scary at this point, but don't worry, we'll put her back together now. For reassembling the doll, I'm first gluing some wire armatures to the doll to reconnect the deconstructed parts. After that was done, I'm sculpting the rest with some epoxy sculpt. I sculpted her new feet with some soft polymer clay and then attached them to the body with epoxy sculpt as well. After drying and a lot of sanding, this is the result so far. Now it's time to repaint her skin. I used the method of my skin custom tutorial, first priming and then airbrushing the skin tone. I also added some blushing to the body to make it look even cuter. really good so far. The next thing I'm making are her horns. I first started to sculpt them from polymer clay, but for some reason I really had trouble to insert the magnets this time, so I remade them with some polymorph. You just heat this plastic with boiling water and can then shape it into any desired shape. They turned out very nice this time. I made her tail the same way and then just painted it lilac. To attach her tail later, I drilled a tiny hole in her back. Now we can already repaint her face. I've added some magnets to her head already for the horns later and start giving her some light blushing after spraying her with some MSC first. the eye shape for her was a bit hard. I wanted to make her look really cute and anime-like, but I didn't want to copy her exact anime eyes, since that would not have looked good on the doll. some 
inspiration from one of my favorite doll artists, Oscar Magic Doll on Instagram, and I think it looks really cute. I'm using different shades of blue to add some color to the iris and give her some super cute and curly lashes. After building up several layers of pencils, I'm going in with some acrylics and watercolor to make the colors pop even more. Her lips are very simple and just get a little bit of blushing. The finished touches are some cute white marks on her cheeks and some glass on her lips. I really really love her face. Time to make her outfit! To make this, I decided to make a little white skirt, a separate pink dress, the little cape, some stockings, the red shoes and some hair accessories. I'm starting with the little skirt first. For that I'm making some ruffles from white fabric and sew them to the fabric stripe. Then I attach a waistband, sew some little darts to make it fit even better and add two snap buttons in the back. For her dress, I'm cutting out the fabric pieces first. Then I'm ironing the white front stripe, cut apart some lace to make it a bit tinier and sew everything to the front. Then I'm taking the sleeves and attach some elastic ribbon to the sleeve ends and clean up the seams. I also add a gathering thread on top of the sleeves. I'm sewing the sleeves to the dress. I cut out the collar from white fabric and cleaned up the seams with some glue before sewing it onto the dress. Then I'm closing the side seams of the dress, add a little lace on the bottom seam as well and sew on some tiny buttons in the front. I ended up making the dress a second time because I made a mistake with the pattern first and it was too small, but in the end it turned out super cute. For her stockings, I'm cutting out the pattern from super elastic white fabric, add a lace on the top and sew everything together. For her cape, I ironed the little print she has on a stripe of pink fabric and sew it onto the pieces of the cape, adding some lace to the bottom of the stripe and to the bottom of the cape. For the lace of the cape, I made some loops of elastic ribbon and sewed it to the satin ribbon. I just glued that ribbon to the inside of the cape on both sides. Then I add 
added a little collar, attached some white pom-poms I made to it and added the lacing with some elastic ribbon. Her shoes were the biggest challenge. I wanted to make her the usual way by making a papier-mâché base first and then sculpt it with polymer clay. Sadly the clay was breaking too much to make a complete shoe out of it. Then I tried polymorph but it just didn't look good, so I had to think of another way to make the shoes. I ended up making some soles from cardboard and added some satin fabric to one side of each sole. Then I made a little pattern and cut it out from red jersey fabric. I cleaned up the inside seams and sewed together the back sides. Then I placed them on the feet together with the sole, gathered the fabric together and glued it onto the backside of the sole. Then I made some salts from polymer clay, baked them and glued them to the shoes. I cleaned up all the edges with some more polymer clay and baked the shoe. I just needed to paint the soles red and add some red lacing and a ribbon on the front to them. adorable. Now it's time for her hair. Kana has this beautiful white and lilac ombre hair, so I made some yarn hair wefts and added a gradient to the wefts with pastel chalks. Then I'm starting to glue the wefts onto her head directly and already start cutting her bangs to the right shape.
looks so cute. The last thing I needed to make are her hair accessories. For the big beads I take some wooden beads and drilled some bigger holes into them first. Then I'm painting them super dark blue and add some gloss varnish for a perfect finish. For her headband I'm gluing together a tiny dark blue satin ribbon and make a little ribbon for the top of her head. Now I can finally add her head back to her body and start dressing her. I first put on her skirt and carefully glue her tail on with some super glue. Then I'm adding the dress, the stockings, the cape and the shoes. For attaching her hair beads, I take a little elastic loop and pull the pigtails of Kano through the beads. After that I'm adding the satin ribbon to her head and glue on the little ribbon. And yeah, she's finally done! I had so much fun making her. And it's so cool to have this tiny dragon doll in my collection. How do you like my Kana doll? What do you like most about her? And who's your favorite character from Kobayashi-san Shino Maid Dragon? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, here's a shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing and without you I couldn't make videos at all. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a beautiful creative day. Bye!